2024 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 Final Edition, the ultimate off-road machine. If you haven't seen the 2024 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 Final Edition up close, it's a vehicle that's sure to capture your attention. While Jeep Wranglers are a common sight on the road, the 392 Final Edition manages to stand out from the crowd. Our test model was decked out in the eye-catching Earl Clear Coat color along with several exclusive Final Edition features. The base price for the 2024 Wrangler Rubicon 392 Final Edition is $91,545, but with all the upgrades and additional options included, our test vehicle came to a total of $108,475. Jeep offers a wide range of trim levels for the 2024 Wrangler, and to the casual observer, most of them may look similar. However, the Final Edition features some unique exterior details, like special badges on the hood and sides, that set it apart while still maintaining its signature Jeep look. The exterior color, as mentioned, is truly impressive, and the interior is equally stylish. Our test model was outfitted with black Napa leather, and I appreciated the large center screen on the dashboard, along with the physical knobs for essential functions like volume and climate control. It strikes a nice balance between modern tech and a classic analog feel. One important thing to note is that the 392 Final Edition is likely to become an instant classic. Jeep is producing only 3,700 units worldwide for 2024, making it a rare find. As a Jeep fan who hadn't driven one in a while, I approached the Wrangler with an open mind. I took it on some everyday tasks like grocery shopping and prepping for a trip, where it performed flawlessly. The air conditioning was particularly impressive, which was a relief during the hot weather we had that week. When it came to off-roading, the Wrangler Rubicon 392 Final Edition exceeded my expectations. I took it off the beaten path to test out some of its off-road features, and it handled the terrain with surprising ease. I usually stick to paved roads, but this vehicle handles water and mud with ease. I was pleasantly surprised by how effectively the cameras assisted me in tricky situations, ensuring I never felt unprepared for the terrain. The impressive 48 to 1 crawl ratio and distinctive torque converter locking strategy are designed for navigating steep rocks and sandy surfaces, which is exactly what we tackled. I took it slow, but it managed the challenges effortlessly. Additionally, it features a tri-level hydro-guide air intake system that channels up to 15 gallons of water away from the engine. While I didn't push it to those limits, I can see how it would be beneficial. I also took it out during heavy Florida rain, and it performed solidly on the road. The 35-inch BF Goodrich all-terrain tires handled puddles without any problems. The final edition is equipped with an 8,000-pound capacity-worn winch, a half-inch suspension lift providing 11.6 inches of ground clearance, and rock sliders for added protection. Some standout features of the 392 final edition include four driver-selectable modes, four WD Auto, four WD High, Neutral, and four WD Low, off-road plus with sand and rock modes, select speed control, Electronic Range Select True Lock Electronic Locking Differentials Electronic Front Sway Bar Disconnect Transfer Case Skid Plate Shield Dana M220 Wide Full Floating Rear Axle Heavy Duty Dana 44 Front Axle Braking and Acceleration Thanks to the powerful 6.4L Hemi V8 engine, which delivers 470 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque, Acceleration is impressively swift. It can go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 4.5 seconds and complete the quarter mile in 13.0 seconds. I had no trouble launching off the line or reaching highway speeds. While it isn't the quietest vehicle on the road, who can complain when you're behind the wheel of a V8 like this? Acceleration 0 to 60 miles per hour, 4.5 seconds. Jeep Wrangler 392 Final Edition Fuel Economy I mainly used the onboard computer to track fuel economy, and the V8-powered off-road Wrangler performed as expected. With such a robust engine, I didn't anticipate stellar fuel efficiency, and the numbers aligned closely with Jeep's estimates, fluctuating within about 1 mpg. 
I kept the air conditioning running throughout and drove it through various conditions, city streets, highways, and off-road during the hottest parts of the day. When off-roading with the air conditioning on and parked in the sun, I occasionally saw fuel economy around 11 mpg. The interior was nicer than any Jeep I have ever been in. It had black Napa leather trim seats along with Mayan gold and Tupelo accents. I am told the power adjusting seats are a new feature this year, but they were great. I'm only about 5 feet 6 inches, so having the ability to raise the seat was very helpful. They are heated seats, but I think ventilated seats would be another considerable upgrade. Sitting in traffic in the sun was quite hot with the top down. The second row of seats were comfortable as well. It had three seat belts and was spacious enough for adults, though three adults might get tight. The Sky One Touch Power Top was awesome. This is a $3,995 upgrade, but you simply press the button and the roof opened up. A necessity? No, but it was very cool to be in what was essentially a convertible Jeep for a few days. It was also pretty fast as I got caught in the rain and it closed within 20 seconds. I really liked the touchscreen on the Wrangler 392. It came equipped with some cool features, such as off-road maps and trail maps that you could navigate to. It also showed the difficulty of these trails and some information about each one. I selected a map of my area and had no idea some of the trails were there. Pretty cool to see. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto worked as expected, as did Bluetooth. The graphics were very clear, and even though there were a lot of menus, it was pretty easy to find all the information I needed. I also liked the sound system a lot. I was surprised at how spacious the cargo area was, but it makes sense that it would be big enough to carry all your essentials for an adventure. It has 67.4 cubic feet behind the second row of seats, with plenty of space for coolers, sleeping bags, extra tires, and whatever else you might need. Our test vehicle had a removable top, which meant the bag for that also lived in the cargo area. The back door swung open from the right side, making access very easy. The upper window also opened if you didn't want to open the whole back door. The door was pretty heavy, but that's because there was a full-size tire back there, which is also nice. You know, the public's feelings on Jeep can be fickle. I was excited to drive a Wrangler after so many years and wasn't disappointed. I know the price is a major source of contention for people, but I'm not really bothered by it. Many people might add these features and systems on any way, so why not have them from the factory? Another major point is that when you purchase or lease a vehicle with all those add-ons from the factory, it gets rolled into your payment or upfront cost immediately. I was impressed by how the 2024 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 Final Edition handled itself off and on the road. The engine is incredibly powerful and fun, and the interior receives some prominent upgrades as well. Overall, Jeep nailed it with the 392 Final Edition. The 2024 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 Final Edition marks the culmination of a high-performance era for the Wrangler, showcasing a powerful 6.4-liter V8 engine that delivers an impressive 470 horsepower and 470 LBFT of torque. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe if you like videos like this. Thank you.